Yeah. Yep. If if given the opportunity to go deeper in the ocean than any human has ever gone versus going to Mars, I would definitely pick the ocean as well. Yeah, For totally. Sure. Like uh, James Cameron style. Oh yeah. You know, you know, he did that uh, Mariana Trench dive thing. Did you hear about that? I I don't know what happened. But I knew he was going to. I didn't. Yeah. I so he did it. Attention. So he's he's been. I guess he he shares the title or whatever with. Two, uh, two other people have done it, apparently, like 30 years ago or something. Oh, really? But b been to the deepest part of the world. That's cool. Uh, yeah. In his custom submarine. Yeah, well, you can't go without, like, super stuff around you because the pressure of the water is yeah. so intense. You just go yeah. splat. It's <laughs> yeah, terrifying. Totally. You know, yeah. it's like just as unforgiving as the void of space kind of level like go outside and you're you're dead if you know yeah <laughs> also too I, I feel like there is more of a possibility of there being some like ancient sea beast or something at the very bottom of the ocean that like nobody's seen before yeah, like there's probably tons like rather of than life. you know to going to outer space to to go find that or whatever <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there's potentially, if there is life or something uh, like microbial on Mars, it would still be really a massive discovery. Yeah, oh, and absolutely. It, would be, it potentially could change science and stuff a lot more than finding something at the bottom of the ocean could. Yep, yep. But there's also way more likelihood of you finding something at the bottom of the right. ocean. So yeah. it's, it's, um, it's I think toss the answer is we need to do both. <laughs> I like that. Let's stop um, all the wars yeah. and just go diving. Mm -hmm. And then go yeah. up into space. Yeah. Like, ideally with one um, one kind of a ship that can do both. Ooh. <laughs> you know, uh, kind of like Flight of the Navigator. Um. <laughs> I, although, like, the, generally, there's such a big concern about how heavy the thing is that you're sending up into space that they make him, like, super flimsy. Whereas, yeah. like, whatever you're putting in the ocean, you're like, just seven inches of steel, go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, well, that is true, but James Cameron's um, sub was actually pretty small. Like, it's like, the, I'm sure the, the steel or whatever it was, was really thick, but the actual physical size of the entire thing, fairly small, mm. which is kind of, smaller than I thought it would be. I don't know what that's based on. Not like I'm some, <laughs> some expert in uh, submarine technology or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know enough about it to know like what's impressive or not. <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah. It's really cool that he did it though. Yeah. yeah. If there yeah. was like one thing you could like accomplish in that kind of level of extreme, is that kind of what you'd want to do? Would you want to dive really deep? Um, I think it would be something more along the lines of. Um, uh, so Jacques Cousteau in the 70s uh, ran a series of ex experiments. I think they were called the Con Shelf um, experiments or something. And so he set up an underwater habitat, kind of like a sea lab uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Like it was, um, and it wasn't that deep, right? It was like, I don't know, I'll say f like 40, 50 feet down or something, uh -huh. right? Yeah. But it was, it's basically at the depth at which people are, uh, you know, scuba diving normally. And so they would dive all day and this is a convenient way to be down there. And, and they sort of monitored, you know, like psychologically what's happening oh, yeah. when, you know, or, and even physically, you know, you know, with like astronauts, they go to outer space, they lose, you know, bone density right. and all you know, things like that. So what happens if you put somebody underwater and they're, they're under more pressure all the time and, you know what happens and uh i don't know that that kind of stuff is really cool um and obviously like they were you know looking for new species right um and all that sort of thing so uh, something more along that lines i think but uh yeah it's cool stuff oh man i have to admit <laughs> like my dream house definitely includes a room like a clear bubble that is underwater <laughs> possibly awesome. like where you read you know <laughs> Like, oh yeah um, yeah like just like a place to hang out and just yep. read stare at the fish and sharks yep. and whatever as they go by it's not so yeah. deep down that the light comes mm -hmm. through and yeah that would be awesome of course also <laughs> kind of terrifying 
but I I think the awesome would win as far as like yeah yeah I, I think it's one of those things where it's terrifying the first one or two times, and then you just sort of it becomes the new normal, mm. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get used to it, and that's when you make your mistake and die. I know <laughs> yeah. how this works. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, at least you die in, like, a pretty cool way. Yeah, that's you know true. I mean? Here lies Alex. Like, she she accidentally like imploded. exploded. Yeah, yeah. She, she imploded her bubble <laughs> library and, and <laughs> got eaten by a shark. Cause yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you seen, um, uh, what is it, um, The Abyss? No. No, I haven't. That's a great movie. Isn't it scary, I mean, though? It is, yeah. but it's... It's like, it's like scary in the same way that like, um, Alien or Aliens is scary. Mm. I'm, it, I'm, a, I, yeah. have, I have a weird like thing with like not horror movies, which I, I love, but I can't yeah. watch because afterwards my imagination goes crazy and I can't use the bathroom by myself for like a week. Yeah. But yeah, like... I'm afraid of horror movies. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, no, the scary movies, I have to be in the right mindset for them. And, and if the opportunity passes, I kind of generally don't go back. Like if Calvin is watching a scary movie and I'm in the mood for it, that's cool. But I would never watch it by myself. Right. Kinda, that's Yeah. Yep. So I miss out on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it about the abyss that you're thinking of? Can you uh, still talk about well, it? Well, they have, they have, it's not, it's not a... It's not a reading room that they have, <laughs> an underwater reading room, but um, but it's one of those things where it's like a sort of um, like a what they call like a diving bell, like a oh like yeah. a shape, and then it's open on the bottom. You know what I mean? So something so can like swim and come up. Oh, like and uh, that's that's what how how Jacques Cousteau's thing worked, anyways is uh underwater habitat had yeah. one of those and then and then it's in the abyss and it's like super cool yeah because <laughs> the air pressure would keep the water from coming in yeah yeah but exactly you'd still things could technically pop their heads out oh, or yeah. you know like tentacles could come out and like grab you and pull you down yeah. and smack your head against stuff probably which i imagine is yeah. what happens in the abyss i don't actually know it's mind. not it's not quite like that M most of it is psychological stuff oh, and it's okay. not it's not quite it's not like horror in that kind of way it's more like the atmosphere oh so it's like suspense like, stuff i can't suspense, handle suspense yeah. it's suspense, I, yeah, it's it. suspenseful. <laughs> I can't i can't do a suspense thing i'm like i can't watch super suspenseful movies that are scary or yeah. humorous Funny movies where you're like watching you someone and they're just funny being so or, or stupid that you're like, oh god damn it, this is no, uh, he's gonna do this horrible thing and I have to wait for it to happen. I can't do this. <laughs> it's just too much for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm weird though. I'm like, I have like way too much empathy. I guess I have like an overabundance mm. of it. Yeah. I don't know because I know now that it's not normal to watch a movie and frequently go, oh my gosh, that actor looks like they're having so much fun. That's that's me, that's what I do. Um, that, unless it is normal, how do you feel when you watch movies? Uh oh, I lost you. Uh, yeah. Are you there? Um, you locked can up. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can... But I can... Oh, uh, I see I you think, again. I think we're back, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was weird. Did you hear anything yeah. that I said, or should um, I repeat myself? Uh, yeah, can you repeat uh, the last bit? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no problem. I was just saying that, um, what was I saying? Uh oh, maybe I can't repeat the last bit that I said. No, I was talking, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about how, um, oh, no, it was there, and then it's gone again. I hate this. My brains. <laughs> um, when you watch a movie... Do you find yourself often thinking about the production of the movie? Because that's what happens to me. I'm oh. so empathetic that I, I'm watching something. I'm like, wow, that looks like that, that prop was really fun to make. Or that, that actor is having, like, this must have been a great part to be acting. That kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I don't actually, for the most part, have that. Um, uh, and I, I feel a little bit lucky <laughs> that I retained um that and I, and basically movie magic 
kind of works on me. <laughs> you know, these little tricks and stuff like that. Um, uh, um, so uh, Luis showed me this clip um, that was really interesting. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a segment where they're in a um, like a mine car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the mine and car and, scene. And, yeah, and they're like they're going through like the the tunnel, like the mine tunnel or whatever. Um, that whole sequence is stop motion animation. They made stop motion versions of like uh, Indiana Jones and and the kid and the whatever that woman's name was. Oh, um, really? That whole sequence is stop motion. Yes, and it's just movie magic that your brain is like, oh yeah, that's what it would look like. That was stop motion? Yeah. <laughs> I feel... <laughs> How? Oh no, I lost you again. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I that's... Know. Oh man. That's crazy though. Yeah. <laughs> so there's lots of stuff like that that they do and and uh, usually I'd, I'd, uh, I don't notice in the same way that like I, or in the opposite way that like I look at games and I'm, I'm very, um, like I'm picking them apart, you know, and I'm seeing all the seams and I'm, and I'm kind of like sometimes a little bit like, um, you know, you get a, that, that little bit of um, satisfaction when you see, um, you know, a game that's like maybe a triple A game, and and it's like you kind of fucked up this asset or whatever. You 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 you've made a there's a seam here, or like I can you there's a little bit of a glitch here, um, right, or like that hand like, looks horrible or whatever. Yeah, 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 and it's like you know the weird animations or something, <laughs> and it's and it's just like yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, and that can happen in in pretty much any game. <laughs> so uh, you know, I can feel better about myself <laughs> yeah it, it is interesting how as a game dev i'm no longer capable of playing a game without analyzing everything yeah. about it um, and it's not bad yeah. i can still enjoy the yeah. games but yeah totally but i'm like wow it's just amazing that with these x amount of skills i can have such a diverse mid like whatever and i just keep going yeah. you know and yeah, and yeah. <laughs> but i i'm i'm seriously i'm so empathetic when i watch anything on television or movies that I'm just like mostly excited for the actors. Yeah. So I'm very envious that you can actually like get completely absorbed. <laughs> that must be, that must be fun. That's like going to <laughs> Disney world as a kit or Disneyland, which is the, the, the big main one. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Whichever. But like going to like the Disney world as a yeah. kid <laughs> and like getting like all of this amazing stuff yeah. happening and then going as an adult, <laughs> And being like, oh, look, oh, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> you know, kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, yeah, also, um, I generally have pretty low expectations. Um, that is one of the keys to, to happiness in my to, personal opinion. <laughs> for, for movies, um, I, I have, have pretty low expectations, generally speaking. Uh, and so I, I tend to enjoy the ones that I, I do filter, obviously. I'm not, I'm not like any movies, just like, wow, this is amazing or something. Sharknado 5, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, here's a weird question for you. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, just on the 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 topic of empathy, yeah. um, can you think of a game where you felt particularly empathetic towards a character or um, you know NPC or creature or something? Oh gosh. Um... The first thing that comes to mind is actually, um, it's probably not the, the, the strongest one, but it's one of the more yeah. recent things that I've done is I actually played Papers, Please again. Yeah. And not for the main character, but for the family. I feel very empathetic for this family mm. that the person you're playing has to take care of and deny all of these like base necessities right. to yeah. basically. Yeah. Like, I felt, I felt very, very strongly attached to them in a kind of an empathetic way. Um, trying to think what else I've played because I definitely do get that that definitely yeah. happens um and probably to me more so than most people because I'm weird like that <laughs> <laughs> um oh man 
just trying to think of games. I it was just I just recently played like a hundred games for for reasons. Had reasons for playing them, um, but so like <laughs> there's kind of turned into like a game soup in my head. Okay, um, that's cool. <laughs> Do, do you have any games that you've actually had that kind of connection happen to you? Um, the one that comes to mind is... Uh, did you ever play Shadow of the Colossus? I've watched Calvin play some of it. I didn't actually play okay. it myself. But I, I've okay. heard that, that I could understand where you're going with that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just these massive, massive, beautiful, beautiful... Uh, sort of beasts of burden uh, and uh, you know you kind of feel bad after you you kill them <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no it's, but it's you, you do what you gotta do <laughs> it's an interesting that actually I thought that was one of the more beautiful things about that game was yeah. the the way that it connects you to these creatures that you're killing it's kind of mm -hmm. like oh sort yeah. of have to do this but <laughs> yeah do i i guess so it's the game <laughs> yeah yeah totally <laughs> and i mean it's that. satisfying too obviously but yeah oh um, yeah but uh yeah and also the the just obviously the sense of space or um scale in that game was like really yeah. impressive those yeah. two things together i think um like the sort of empathy of the the creatures and then that massive sense of scale is really sort of unique yeah no i can definitely understand that that coming to mind for you that makes a lot of sense because yeah it is really unique it's it's inspired i think other like a handful of indie games that have kind of reached out for that sort of boss fights only yeah. kind of yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> idea but i feel like what shadow of the classes actually did was really beautiful like the whole yeah the whole thing like the, the yeah. story it was telling was mm -hmm. was wonderful um, I, I generally since I've become a game developer one of the things that I have denied myself the pleasure of is story based games because I don't mm. have the time to generally play them all the way through and it's frustrating for me to not do that or to realize that I have spent you know 60 hours on right. the game and I'm like oh man that's 60 <laughs> hours of the development i could have been doing yeah no that's yeah um but yeah. maybe i mean I it's pretty that. standard on some level to like not really have normal office hours as a as an indie and just kind of work yourself into the ground yeah <laughs> so I, yeah, well, that, I don't know that's why i have a tread desk <laughs> so you can um, double work yourself into the ground well, <laughs> Well, well, so I can work, like, there are times in which I need to, where I have deadlines or whatever, and it's like, I need to be putting in these long hours, right? right? Uh, that's just the sort of the nature of it to a degree. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, if I can keep active while working, um, that helps me a lot psychologically um, and physically, I guess, as well. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. No. And, and also to just like you know taking lots of sh short breaks refueling right you're like man my feet hurt I need to lay down <laughs> yeah well it's it's uh i don't know it's like a um a marathon or not i don't know if a marathon is yeah kind of marathon like you know the the long march of uh indie game development yeah. um uh, you know, or like the the tortoise and the hare, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you have to, you have to take breaks and stuff like that. But you gotta keep on moving forward, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, you'll get there eventually, kind of thing. Um, yeah. Although, I don't like, know. How do you feel? I, like? I know that I definitely experienced it after we released Legend of Dungeon, but there's kind of like yeah. this post-release blah that happens so you, you actually yeah. push yourself so far and for so long that you're just like yeah useless for a while did, did that yeah. happen to you too when you did like the original uh, of jazz punk or yeah pretty yeah i mean i had to sort of stick around a little bit to for follow through to you know in terms of like my job partly is um is to 
do a bit of tech support, uh, you know, after release, uh, yeah. in terms of, you know, making sure people, you know, there's no critical bugs and stuff like that. Um, but then, uh, you know, then you go on vacation and go scuba diving or whatever, and then yeah. uh, it's a pretty good reset to button for psychologically post post release. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, that's true. It's do you do you tend to have a lot of deadlines at this point? Like we do, we do now uh, for the, the port for this. Yeah, for this thing, um, uh, we we generally don't, um, and that's that's uh, a blessing and a curse, you know, because we plan to release the original version of Jasmine like forever ago you know and it was it was only supposed to be this small little right little game you know but then it's like you keep on adding stuff and then you're like well we could release now or we could release in two months or we could keep going and you know keep pushing it and you know we did yeah. more of that and <laughs> we're glad that we did um yeah. well, you have so, a cool game uh, to 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 show for it so obviously <laughs> you know that's good. You, you made some good decisions, although, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> although, yeah, have, would it some... be just as good if you stopped at some point? It's yeah, or started some some other thing or whatever. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what what about you? Like in terms of your like, uh, deadlines. Like, are, do you self-impose like a schedule and stuff like that? Um, we try. We n never managed to actually like. Yeah. hit hard deadlines for ourselves we're just kind of like this mm -hmm. should be done around here and then if it is that's great yeah. if it's not we're like well i guess that's just going to take a little more time uh, we yeah. are running out of money yeah so that's kind of interesting that. <laughs> yeah we've been um yeah. we've been working on this game called upsilon circuit yeah which, um oh um yeah it's just it's a big ambitious project that we're doing that actually requires yep. us to pay a couple other people to help us make it mm. for the first time ever which is terrifying, actually. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty scary yeah. experience in itself. Um, but it's like, because we're running out of money, it means we're going to have to get some sort of funding of some sort. And so figuring out how to deal with actual deadlines is definitely on our list of things to learn how to deal with. Um, but for right now, yeah. it's kind of like this. Yeah. We have, we have the luxury of having this uh, game assembly, is the name of it, the co-working space. And it mm. kind of keeps normal people hours. So mm. we kind of try to keep normal people hours. Yep. And that yep. helps a lot. It gives us like a clear break from when to stop working or at least, okay, this is, this is the truth actually. It's when to stop feeling guilty about not right. working. Yeah, yeah. That's, we still work when we're home, but it, yeah. it's less guilt ridden because it's like, oh, I actually got a full normal people's day worth of work done already. This is bonus, yeah. you know, and I can take a break and not feel bad about it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really interesting. Um, uh, it, you know, like when <laughs> when I um, when I, I first quit my job to to go indie full time, you know, I'm thinking, um, you know, no boss, like no there, no guilt, no deadlines, no <laughs> no nothing. <laughs> uh and um, what happened to that <laughs> well you know it's it's just different like yeah. you know it's just different yeah um the, uh, on the whole i gen like i totally prefer it for sure because it was you know w when i was working you know for a small studio it was like everything was tracked absolutely every like down to half an hour um increments like you know oh, really like you know you know your time is allocated very specifically uh, across you know you know i had have like um a couple of projects on the go at once um but then you know going indie it's like the the total opposite <laughs> in terms of like like luis and i and tracking <laughs> time like we very quickly threw that out the window because <laughs> we just found that it was not helping us uh like it was making us well it's like it, you know you you feel bad if you don't hit a <laughs> deadline kind of thing yeah um and like hard deadline for us is still a hard deadline 
but there's a but um those mini deadlines and stuff like that like things get shifted around and i don't know it's hard to be like and i find it takes it takes a lot of time to track that time and to uh lay out schedules that actually work um yeah yeah that's and, yeah and because so you, you think you, something's you gain work. some time by yeah. not doing that <laughs> and i thought i know it's like terrible um um like advice or like um a terrible idea for as a small business person <laughs> um to be like yeah don't track anything don't don't uh um that. you know schedules schmedules <laughs> or whatever um but uh, there is something to be said for not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I kind of agree. Like, there is some really nice, nice benefits to just being, like, free-flowing for the most part. Like, basically, yeah. our deadlines it's... are generally when is the next PAX and what do we want to have shown for that. Yeah, yeah. And how can yeah, that be productive? You still, need, but... you still need the hard deadlines yeah. in terms of, like, you know, uh, you know, m money and uh, stuff like that. Things yeah. do need to, but uh, but it's just like don't sweat sweat the small stuff. You know. Um, yeah, exactly. Easy to to um, you know get down on yourself for not doing this or not doing that. But also, like I, I like I found with you know jazz punk at least like it's like things took a lot longer, but I was more happy with. Uh, things anyway so like you know things are always harder and <laughs> harder than you think and they take longer but it's 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 more rewarding mm. and you know that's why i'm still doing indie stuff it is it is really rewarding that's for sure that's how i feel all it good <laughs> oh no the, your right. video froze up again Oh shit! Stupid internet! <laughs> what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> We've been having trouble with Comcast here. It's our only option, and oh, yeah. it's not been very good recently. Oh, I'm I'm just happy our internet didn't disappear entirely. That happened the other week. That oh. was like suddenly. <laughs> you don't realize until you don't have it just how much yeah. you use the internet. Yeah. Like suddenly, totally. like Calvin was like, I don't have anything on my phone or anywhere to do that is offline, mm. pretty much. It's like, I just, cause he doesn't download like game apps or anything like that. He mostly, right. he's like watching something on Netflix or something like that to relax. Yeah. So it's yeah. interesting. It's like, what do we do? We don't even have any <laughs> board games here. <laughs> They're all over at the office. No. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, did anybody on the internet, any of you chat people, did you have any questions for Jess regarding jazz punk or if he wears pants or, you know, all those things? That <laughs> 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 no! <laughs> was one of the standard questions that we asked for a little while is, do you dev with your pants on? But it does. Generally, know, yes. Generally, yes. <laughs> Just like how much can you actually determine about a person from whether or not they wear pants while they're at home basically <laughs> it, it's like i don't know that's it that seems um, weird to, to ask even yeah, on some level I, but it's kind of interesting yeah i feel like you'd have to run a larger scientific study to find additional correlational information <laughs> if you dev with your pants on do your games sell better than if you dev with your pants on yeah like, we yeah i don't know there, yeah totally it could be it could um, be a thing yeah interesting i never thought about that yeah. i mean i could run my own experiment i suppose yeah but then you still you know you With don't myself. have a control you can't have a control oh yeah your, true. you know like um did you make jazz punk with your pants on because maybe then you can make your next game with your pants off <laughs> oh no you, we're losing you again what is going on <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, Hello? We lost you. Yeah, I'm here. Ah, 
Sorry, I don't know if whose side the internet is on. I just I just yeah. told Calvin if he's downloading things to stop, but he says he's not, so I don't know what's going on. It might be me. I don't know. It's all your <laughs> I'll fault. Download all my wares, all my <laughs> old games downloads or oh, something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, um, someone's curious about the process that you go through for like the ideas and humor behind jazz punk. Okay, um, so Luis and I um, write together generally, uh, and it's it's um, a sort of thing. We'll have writing meetings. We'll sit down. Uh, we're we'll usually have like a, a scenario or a situation, um, or sometimes even like a part of a level. Like um, Luis, you know, it makes a map or whatever, and then we're looking at a certain place, and it's like there's, there's a sort of dry area here, nothing really going on. And we'll sort of make a list um, separately. Like we'll be like, okay, five minutes on the clock, go, um, and uh, scratch down a bunch of ideas, um, and then we we make those ideas fight each other, sort of. <laughs> um, so like back and forth, and then and then you know I'll say something, Luis will make fun of my idea. And then we build upon that. Like the, the idea that's in the game is usually some uh, joke of a joke that um, that gets taken too far, kind of thing. I like it. Um, yeah, it it generally works for us. The other thing is um, usually what is in the game is the the bottom, what we call the bottom in terms of um, the quality of our ideas. The bottom of your ideas. Like the butt of a joke? Is that where you're leading this into? Oh no, we lost him again. What is going on with the internet? Hold on, everyone. Wait. Oh, when I put my hands out, I get darker. Look at that. Pink? Not pink. Not pink. Pink. Not pink. Huh. Go camera. Weirdness. Did we lose him for good? Oh no. Refresh. Aaron? Hello? Stop using the for a Can you stop using the internet for a second? Are you there? Uh, I can hear you now. Okay, can good, you? good. Okay. You, you totally locked up. Yeah. Have we both now successfully told everyone to stop using the internet? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. So I, I should probably get going uh, soon, I think. Um, I, c I can't remember what we were talking about. Um, um, well, we finished our conversation about pants, I think. Right. And you were sharing some of your information about humor, and you said something about it being the bottom oh, of the joke, right. and I don't the, know if you heard my butt, butt joke or not. Ah, no, the bottom of the I barrel. Didn't. What did you say? No, you just you said the bottom, and, and I was like, oh, so it's like the butt of the joke. I was like, just <laughs> okay. <didn't>. Right. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I was just saying um, that um, it's the bottom of the barrel in terms of quality, uh, in terms of wit we go through like a list or whatever and it's and it's like late at night our brains are stupid like we've turned off the like the good ideas mm. and we're just like that's a dumb idea and then we're just making fun of each other's dumb ideas when yeah there's like, this like, point where you get so tired you get funnier yeah you kind of get totally. this new new life this new energy of like it's almost like being drunk, I guess, mm. uh, it, but in a but in a, a sober way. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. That's a great. That's a great little peek into the creative process that you guys have. <laughs> actually, that's really cool. Um, thank you, Wayne, awesome. for asking that. He's another game dev, so that's probably why he was awesome. asking about, you know, <laughs> game creative stuff. There's a lot of devs that watch watch this. I think because. I don't know. We're probably more interested in each other's lives than most other people. I don't know. Yep. Maybe that's. Why. I know I am. Look at me. This is what I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, I have an excuse to like talk and hang out with people. This cool. whole like dev salute thing is kind of a push for me to stay in touch with people that I know and to meet new people. Right. So it's kind yep. of cool. Uh, do you want a small psychic test? Psy not psychic. Psych psycho 
psychoanalytic uh, test sure. before before you <laughs> yeah. leave. Um, yeah. This was something I was planning to do with both both of you because I thought it'd be really interesting to have it, like comparisons between what you mm -hmm. say. Yep. You know that whole thing where like I say a word and then you say the first thing that comes to mind. Oh yeah. Do you, do okay. you want to do a little a little then, of that? And, and then what, whatever the answer is, I'm I'm a serial killer or something. Probably yeah. Okay sure. <laughs> oh, if anyone in chat has any words you want me to to throw at them, I will. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go here. Um, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Mouse. Tire. Glass. Uh, monocle. Pen. Building. Horse. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, undersea. Um, like yeah, undersea. This this okay okay. <laughs> Spoon. Uh, reactive principle. <laughs> Potatoes. Uh, meat. Butts. Skating. Skating. <laughs> well, this is fascinating. <laughs> Cats. Um, uh, rubbing a belly. <laughs> Ring. Thing. Telephone. Crayons. Crayons. <laughs> I'm learning new things right now. That's how did you link those two? Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, you were going to say butts? Oh. Is that it? Um, I you locked up for a minute again. Um, but that can be good. That was really interesting. <laughs> was that fun? Was that an interesting peek uh, into yeah. your own psyche? Uh I mean, it's t Oh, it's coming. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, what did you say? What does that mean? You have oh. to analyze. Oh, the internet. The internet is not for conversations here, between here. game developers. This is not fair. You're like saying things and laughing, and I'm I like, can't... no, what is he saying? Yeah. Are you back? <laughs> oh. I was just saying, yeah can't hear me, eh? I, I can half hear you. Oh. Uh, Your, like, okay. video turned into, like, potato quality video, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> the internet is absorbing you. Don't let it take you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That um, was a perfect timing. If you can... Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. No. No, you can't. Yes. It's really giving out. Should we just give up? Should we give up on our conversation? Okay. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, sort of. I'm going to sign out. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fair. Sorry that the internet yeah. decided to explode. Oh, yep. It's totally your fault. But yep. All me. <laughs> it's always me. That's okay. what happens. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah it was, was fun. That was really fun. Sorry about okay. the internet exploding while I tried to examine your mind. But yeah. That was really fun. I, I broke the internet. That's what happened. Yep. We blame um, you. Definitely. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. best, best of luck with, with well, all of the you. jazz punk ports and babies. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll stay in touch. I hope. So right, see cool. you at some later game developer thing. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Right. Bye. Bye.